consent to open source and openly licensed materials for open educational resource repositories. Presented by UBC Library and copyright at UBC. Open source and openly licensed materials is the third in a series of five videos. The purpose of this video is to discuss the open source and openly licensed content environment. In the slides that follow, we will discuss 1. What are open source and openly licensed resources? And 2. Conditions when using open source and openly licensed content. More content is being made publicly available for copying, reuse, and even repurposing. The open movement seeks to make software, research data, images, and text available to a global audience. Open source content, computer software being the well-known example, is material that can be used by anyone for any purpose, including a commercial one. Organizations such as the Public Knowledge Project, instituted at the University of British Columbia in 1998, extend the open movement. Currently, the project runs a publishing program that includes the Open Journal Systems, which is home to over 1,000 titles. Open data is another area that has greatly enhanced the ability of researchers to identify, reuse, and share data from both public sources and research institutes, universities, and individual researchers. More information can be found in the Open Data Handbook and at the website Open Knowledge. At first glance, there seems to be a contradiction between open and licensing, since the latter imposes restrictions on use. It's better to think of open licenses as permissive licenses. These licenses do not restrict use of the content covered by them. In fact, they explicitly encourage you to use the content. As you will see in the following slides, Creative Commons, perhaps the most widely used of the permissive license regimes, allows you to copy and present the material covered by the license in a number of ways. The license restrictions seek to ensure, among other things, that the creator is attributed in your work, but may also seek to limit applications that try to commercialize or repurpose their work. These limitations are close to the copyright concept of moral rights, the right to be associated with one's creation, and the right of integrity in the work. This slide sets out the various types of licenses that Creative Commons employs. Please note that missing from this list is the CC0 license, which places content in the public domain. CC 4.0 is the current Creative Commons license scheme. As the chart shows, creators can mix and match elements of CC licenses to suit their requirements. Attribution, for which the abbreviation is BY, is the base license statement. If you are using someone's work, there must be acknowledgement of the creator. Each element of the CC scheme beyond attribution either limits or expands the types of uses that can be made. For example, the NC, or non-commercial designation, means that the work cannot be used for a commercial purpose. The ND, or no derivatives designation, means that the work can only be copied in whole, and you cannot adapt or reuse parts of it. The SA, or share alike, designation, means that where you have used a work, you must also designate your new work as share alike. Like all copyrighted material, obtaining permission from the copyright holder to do that which the permissive license does not permit is always available to you. As attribution is the major requirement of nearly all licensing schemes, this slide provides the critical elements for appropriate attribution. All of these headings are perhaps obvious, but the last needs more description. When using CC licenses and linking back to them, there is additional contact information in the attribution documentation. Including the creator, title, and source of the work, the CC license will also provide a URL for seeking additional permissions, a statement on the format of the work, and the license mark. GitHub is a site that permits coders to upload shareable code into repositories and permits others to access, adapt, and otherwise use the content. Repository content can be loaded without the application of license requirements, but offers the option to apply licenses to the content. Like all other licensed content, these software licenses require that conditions be met by downstream users. The public domain is one of the first places to look for content to populate the OERR. The public domain consists of material that no longer enjoys copyright protection and is always free to use and adapt to your needs. The public domain in a copyright context should not be confused with content that is accessible through the internet or other communication platforms. 
In copyright, public domain refers to that intellectual content which does not enjoy any copyright protection. There are two conditions for this state. 1. The content has passed the term of copyright protection. In Canada, this would be 50 years following the death of the creator. 2. The creator has declared the work is copyright free. In effect, the creator donates the work to the world. One current means of making such a declaration is to apply the Creative Commons Zero License to the work. Some content becomes free because of legislative decisions. For example, all United States government published works enter the public domain upon their release. This is not true in Canada, where the government exercises a copyright in works for a period of 50 years from the year of publication. Many Canadian government departments will allow you to reproduce content published by the department without permissions, provided the copy is accurate and properly attributed including the title and name of the organization. Furthermore, the content should not be presented in a manner that suggests the copy is endorsed by the Government of Canada and it can only be used for a non-commercial purpose. This has been one in a series of interrelated presentations on copyright and open educational resource repositories presented by UBC Library and Copyright at UBC. For more information, please refer to the following Copyright at UBC website resources.